Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about gentle skincare, sometimes self care, and today we're talking firming skincare. Now, loss of firmness or elasticity can be due to a lot of causes like aging, UV damage, illness, weight loss, and just good old gravity, right? Um, there is really only so much we can do when it comes to firming the skin and bringing back elasticity. But there is stuff that we can do. That's what today's video is all about. I want to teach you about some ingredients to look out for, some products to add into your routine, and some techniques to use to help sculpt, lift, and firm your skin to aid you on your well-aging journey. So if you're so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's dive right in. Now, when it comes to firming the skin, we need to focus in on proteins, baby, collagen and elastin. Now, there's other proteins that can help with the structure of the skin, but let's keep things simple and let's just focus in on the two main ones, right? Now, these proteins really help to create thick, firm, um, you know, smooth, supple, youthful skin. Collagen is really what helps our skin to resist fine lines and wrinkles. Elastin is what helps keep our skin elastic and firm and lifted, right? So as we get older, you know, our body naturally creates these proteins to support the structure of the skin. But as we start to get older, our body is less efficient at making the optimal amount of these proteins. There are cell communicating ingredients in skincare that when we apply it topically to our skin, they can signal to our body to increase the production of those really beneficial proteins. They can help to make our skin behave in a more youthful manner. So we have to talk retinoids, right? Uh, this is a fantastic class of ingredients, especially if you want to stimulate collagen, elastin, and filigrin, another great protein that helps your skin retain hydration and it assists your moisture barrier function, which can help with firm skin. Retinoids can do a lot but let's just focus in on that cell communicating benefit that really helps um, to firm up the skin and really help structurally with the skin to help it appear more youthful and more firm. Retinoids are a class of ingredient. We have the prescription-based tretinoin. You do need a doctor's prescription to get that one. But over-the-counter options include retinol and retinaldehyde or retinal spelled with an A, right? So these are a couple of really fantastic options that you can build into your skincare routine if you're looking to really help with um, firming up the skin. I mean, there is a reason why tretinoin is the gold standard and it is really the only FDA approved skincare ingredient for anti-aging purposes. This is really the best of the best and this is really where you want to start. I don't want to spend a lot of time on them because I have other resources that cover retinoids in depth and I really want to focus in on some additional things you may not have thought of when it comes to firming up your skin. So if you want to learn more about retinol or retinoids. I will direct you to my video about retinol and then I also have a playlist about my journey using prescription strength tretinoin. Now let's talk peptides. These are ingredients that you can add in addition to your retinol right alongside of them to really help support any well aging journey, honestly, but especially if you're looking to increase elasticity and firmness in your skin, there are specific peptides that you want to look for. Not all peptides are created equally. Not all of them have collagen stimulating benefits or even well aging benefits. So don't just go for the word peptide because I know they're sexy. I know they're interesting. Trust me, I get excited by them too but it's really important to be strategic about the ones you're building into your routine, knowing what benefits that they bring. The other reason I really love peptides as a, like a supplement or a complementary ingredient alongside of retinoids is that they can be used alongside retinoids. You know, these are ingredients, retinoids, they can really dry out your skin. They can be kind of aggressive. I do have sensitive skin. You know, I do talk about gentle skincare on my channel. And so it's tough for me to just rely on retinoids alone because I can only use them like three times a week, right? Um, before my skin gets too tested. It's definitely the opposite case with peptides. They don't really stimulate the skin. They communicate to the skin and to the skin cells, but they don't stimulate your skin. They're not aggressive. They're not exfoliating and they're generally just not irritating to the skin. So on your off nights with retinol, it makes sense to build them in, use them in the morning, use them at night. Contrary to most popular belief, they can be used alongside in the 
same routine as um, retinoids. The you know proof of them not going well together just isn't really strong. There's really not much to worry about there. But let's talk about what peptides you need to build into your routine for elastic and firm skin. So let's talk copper peptides because this is, in my opinion, one of the best peptides out there for the well aging journey and especially good for helping to firm up the skin. It is a collagen stimulating peptide and that's great. I mean, you may be thinking, hey, I want elastin and don't worry, copper peptide has that too. Um, but it is good to have your eye on that collagen stimulation as well because this is still an essential protein to that really lifted and firm skin. So it does help to stimulate collagen, but it, it does also stimulate some other really essential proteins like elastin. Yes, that's what we want to see for elastic and firm skin, right? And some other proteins that really help structurally with the skin. And that's really the key here is the structure of the skin. We want very sound, uh, very strong structure and the copper peptide can really help with those types of proteins. Now back to copper peptides, there was a really interesting study that happened in 1998. And I want to say this is a very exciting kind of result from this study, but it's a very small, very, very small study. So you really do need to take this with a grain of salt. But I think it's just some nice evidence that copper peptide can really run right up alongside of those heavy hitters in the well aging game. So they compared copper peptide against vitamin C and tretinoin for the collagen and cell communicating abilities. And after one month, they found that copper peptide helped to increase collagen production by 70%, vitamin C by 50%, and tretinoin only by 40%. And so, like I said, take it with a grain of salt. It was a very small selection of people. But I think that the takeaway here is, as I mentioned, copper peptide can really run right alongside of those heavy, more popular um, you know, ingredients that we hear about a lot when when it comes to stimulating collagen and other great proteins on the skin, copper peptide can play alongside of the heavy hitters. So let's talk products. Neod Copper Amino Isolate Serum. This is probably the one of the best um, copper peptide serums that we have on the market today. In my personal experience, I think this is a really high quality product. It contains 1% of copper peptide, and that actually is a very high amount. Peptides do work in, in lower concentrations. So 1% is a very good amount, but they have combined it with an additional 1% of tripeptide 1. This is such an interesting peptide. On its own, it is a signaling peptide, and what it does is it signals to our skin to stimulate more collagen, but it also acts as a carrier peptide, meaning that it helps to uh, stabilize and carry the copper peptide into our skin, uh, making it more efficient and more available for our skin. There are also some other uh, collagen stimulating peptides in the formula, but what I find really compelling is that 1% of each of those really great peptides. It is an expensive product, I have to admit. It is about $62 for 15 milliliter product or $93 for a 30 milliliter bottle. It's pricey. The reason I bring it up though is because it works. I would never recommend something, especially at that price point, if I didn't have like personal results with it. This firms the skin. It makes the skin feel, you know when your skin just feels thicker, but like in a good way, right? It feels thicker and firmer and more lifted. That's how it made my skin feel after a couple of weeks of consistent use. It absolutely firms the skin and it does have this really interesting kind of like refining quality to the skin. If you have enlarged pores, it really helps to smooth those and make them look more refined and slightly tighter. Um, it makes your skin just look really smooth, really lifted. It feels thick, it feels firm, and that really comes down to those peptides that are helping with the structural integrity of the skin. You know, one of the things when it comes to like loose and sagging pores is helping to improve the structural integrity of the skin with all those good proteins because that's what helps keep the pore from sagging. It's So that's why we're seeing those results with the pores, right, with this type of serum because it's doing exactly that, but it's also overall helping um, the skin to feel more firm and lifted. Now, is $63 
$20 or $92 is just not going to fit your skincare budget. I totally understand. I've been there. There are affordable options. The Ordinary Multi-Peptide Plus Copper Peptides. This is a sister brand to Neod. So the formulation is kind of similar here, but really the goal with The Ordinary is to create more accessible and affordable products, right? So we have 1% of copper peptide here, but crucially, we're missing that 1% of tripeptide 1. And I think that's really one of the biggest differences between the two serums and the biggest discrepancy in price is you're missing, remember, 1% is a lot and that's going to drive the price up definitely. This is one of the more pricier products in um, the Ordinary collection because of the 1% of copper peptide. So to add the tripeptide would really drive the cost up. So what they've done is they have combined the copper peptide with other well aging peptides, other collagen stimulating peptides to kind of help round out the formula. Um, this is definitely something that still works on the skin, but I have to admit it's going to take a lot longer than Neod to show results or to feel results under your fingertips, right? But I still really like this serum and I think that with consistent use, it definitely can help with that firming journey. It is not the only firming product that you want to use. I think I hope that I've emphasized that already in the video, but it is one of those supportive products that you can add into your routine. And this one is a lot more affordable at $31 for 30 milliliter of product. So let's talk Botox peptides, right? You've probably seen these because they've really been making the rounds in the skincare community on social media for a couple of years now. They make for really compelling, kind of clickbaity titles, quite honestly, like Botox in a bottle, Botox in a jar. The most common and the most popular one is acetyl hexapeptide 8. It goes by the trade name Argoline, and you can actually find a 10% solution from the ordinary. Now, let me tell you about this peptide because I have mixed feelings on it. It definitely gives really nice results. This is something that like if you want to nearly immediate effect and like, look, most skincare is not going to give you an immediate effect beyond hydration and moisture, right? Um, when it comes to firming, it's a long-term game, but this is one of the peptides that can give you like a firming or lifted effect fairly quickly. Acetyl hexapeptide 8, extremely common in eye cream. So if you've ever used an eye cream that you were really happy with, like it really like firmed or smoothed your under eye, I would almost guarantee you acetyl hexapeptide 8 is in that cream because it does give that type of effect in just a few weeks. It's a very, very, very effective. Um, and I think that it can be a really nice product to build into your routine in addition um, to some of the other ones that we've talked about. And the reason why I really want to emphasize that is because this is not collagen stimulating. This is not altering the structure or the proteins of our skin. It's a temporary effect and all it's really doing is targeting the facial um, uh, movement on our face. You know, the smile lines, right? The, the, the forehead lines. It's not as... Um, invasive as Botox, but it's not as long lasting as Botox. It's not quite working the same way, but it, it can be helpful. And if you're just looking for a result fast, adding in like the ordinary 10% solution can be very beneficial. I actually really like to use it around my eye area um, because it really does like firm and smooth that area quite quickly. Is it structurally changing anything? No, that's why I'm always using my retinal eye creams and things like that as well in addition. But if I'm looking for that quick effect, I know I can rely on this ingredient. So it's something fun to add into your routine. It should not be the only thing that you go towards for first firming up your skin, but again, can be very helpful. So let's talk niacinamide because it is a multi-beneficial ingredient. Yes, it helps to brighten the skin. Yes, it helps to support your skin barrier, which by the way, this is something that you want to keep your eye on if you have the goal of firming your skin. I always say it always goes back to the barrier because it always does. If your skin barrier is weak, it means that your skin is not holding on to hydration the way that it's supposed to. It's experiencing dehydration or transepidermal water loss. When your skin is not holding on to hydration, your skin appearance is going to be a lot thinner looking, maybe even saggier or hollow looking. A lot of people report with severe dehydration on the skin, the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles almost overnight that weren't ever there before. And that's because your skin, you know, the proteins can only do so much. If your skin isn't hydrated, it's not going to be tented up and plump and firm. It's going to be loose and saggy, right? And that's where we're going to see some of those fine lines and creepy skin and all of that. So if 
your barrier is weak, you really need to work on that. Niacinamide can help stimulate all those lovely ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids that strengthen up that barrier and help hold hydration in place. And then establishing a really good hydrating, gentle hydrating routine can go a long way to your skin looking firm, smooth, lifted when it's holding on to hydration. It's actually amazing how much that can impact just the appearance of your skin and just the health and the feeling of your skin too. But I digress. Niacinamide, between 4 and 5%, helps to stimulate collagen and elastin on the skin, which is so, so important. We've already covered this so much, right? And it's another one of those ingredients that can be used alongside of the more aggressive retinoids that aren't going to test your skin so much. So these are nice ingredients to add in addition. Now, I really love Stradia Rewind. I've been talking about it for years because it is one of the few products that has firmed my skin like visibly and, and to the touch. And that's really what I wanted to focus on on today's video. I only wanna talk about things I've had massive, like positive experiences with, and this for sure is one of them. When I first started using the serum, um, which contains 5% of niacinamide, I was using it for sure for the collagen stimulating and for the brightening. And that's all I really wanted to see on my skin. So I was really surprised when my skin started to feel very similar to Neod, thicker, more smooth, more lifted, more bouncy. Um, I was very, very surprised. I wasn't expecting that. And niacinamide can do that at 5%, 4 and 5%, really the sweet spot for this. But there's another ingredient that's been combined with niacinamide that really um, helps take this serum to the next level, and that's 2.5% of DMA. This is an ingredient that can help firm the skin and, and can do so quite quickly. Um, it definitely helps to aid in that that smooth, firm, bouncy feel. And so these two ingredients together is like a match made in heaven. I could not believe how good it made my skin feel. So it's a really, really fantastic serum and definitely one that I think you can add into your routine that's gonna be really gentle but give you some meaningful results. So you may be wondering about massage and devices. Are these really helpful for the firming journey? Maybe. <laughs> um, I do think that they can be beneficial and supplementary, but I don't think that they should be the only thing that you rely on. I think what we've covered so far is probably the most important information to take in when it comes to um, looking to improve the firmness of your skin. But let's say you checked off retinoids. Let's say you checked off some of these other supplementary, really powerful skincare ingredients that you can use in your skincare routines. Let's talk gua sha. Uh, gua sha is definitely something that people put um, heavy claims on, I think, especially when it comes to lifting and firming and toning the skin, I think, um, toning the muscles underneath the skin. And I am a huge fan of gua sha. I have found it to be very helpful, especially for sculpting, if you will, the face. Um, if you tend to hold a lot of, of a water in your face, which I do, especially if you suffer with like allergies and sinus issues, I do. <laughs> gua sha has been amazing for helping to take down some of that puffiness around that sinus area, but it can also help kind of sculpt out my cheekbones and really help with like that looser skin right underneath your chin. It can be very helpful if you have the type of skin and the type of face that holds on to, to water because it really helps to stimulate lymphatic drainage. But it's so important to remember that gua sha is temporary. Once you've kind of sculpted and and moved all that water out of your face, it's a temporary effect, but it's not, again, meaningfully changing the structure and the proteins of the skin, and that's the number one thing. But that doesn't mean that you can't get some nice quick benefits by using gua sha consistently. I use gua sha consistently, um, and it really does help with the appearance of my skin, and every time I do it, I get this really healthy flush to my skin, too. It really gives me this glowy effect. So, um, you know, is it the number one thing for firming your skin? Absolutely not. Is it a nice additional thing if you have some time, if you want to invest, you know, a little bit of that effort, will it pay off for you? I think it might help. I think it might help. But just remember that it's not meaningfully altering your skin in the long term. It's very temporary. Let's talk microcurrent devices. These are becoming extremely popular. I featured a few on my channel in the last couple of years. I like them. Um, I don't think that they're necessary, but 
they might be a nice addition to your routine. Microcurrent devices send a microcurrent deep into the skin to target the facial muscles. And basically the idea here is that it stimulates your muscles and stimulates them to be more toned and that's how your skin gets more lifted and sculpted, right? It's like a gym for your skin. And you know, when people rapidly lose weight, their skin all over their body can become a little bit um, saggy, right? And so it's the, the general recommendation there and advice is to build, um, you know, like weight training and really build out muscle in your, your workout routines because that's actually what makes the skin look less saggy, more firm, more smooth is a really nice muscular, you know, like meat suit, if you will, right? It really helps to smooth out the skin. And so that's the idea here is really toning up the muscles in the face to make that face skin um, lay smoother and more firm and more sculpted against the muscles. These are very expensive devices, and I think I've already emphasized that they're not doing anything to the structure of your skin. So once you stop using them, results go away. But I have to say, I've used them, and like they do give really quick, nice results on the skin, especially, like I said, I'm somebody who holds some water in my face, so sometimes I do need a little bit of that, that toning and tightening, like here and especially here, and it can really help with that. So I've used the Age R Derma EMS shot from Medicube. This retails about $280 up to about $300. And now this device, you know, all microcurrent devices feel a little bit uncomfortable on the skin because they are basically, you know, giving you a little bit of electricity into your muscles. So you can get some unwanted twitching. Um, and the more intense the setting, the more intense that can be. It doesn't hurt, but it's not super comfortable. It's just a very strange sensation. Um, all microcurrent devices are going to have this. So I wanna put that out there as well. Well, another one that I've used that is uh, interesting and that I've enjoyed using is Zip Microcurrent, the Halo device. Now this retails um, for $350. It does come with a app that you can use that has all of these preset routines for you that can help do different things to the face. But the mechanism here is exactly the same as uh, Medicube. It is sending that microcurrent into the muscle. You are going to get some of that facial twitching. Um, I do find the device a little bit more ergonomic a little bit lighter, fits in your palm a little bit better than um, the MediCube one is a little heavy. Um, so I have grip issues, I have tendinitis, so I do like the zip a little bit better, but both I think work uh, equally as well. The benefits I think were exactly the same for me. So I hope this video helps you think about firming skincare a little bit differently. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. If you liked this topic, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you love the video, it was helpful for you. Maybe you are thinking about firming skincare a little bit differently, I would be so honored if you would hit subscribe. Come join our community if you haven't already. I do release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week. I do long form video shorts. I also have a skincare video podcast as well. So turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I truly hope that you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world. I want to thank you for being here with me today. I love you so much and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.